the question Kenyans are asking is, now that Trump is going to take over from Biden by January 20th, what happens to Kenya? What does Trump's victory mean to Kenya? And the reason as to why they are asking this is because Kenya the other day had an official visit in the United States where several uh, bilateral agreements were made and certain investors agreed to put a lot of their investments in the country. So the question people are asking is, these agreements, the bilateral agreements, the investments, the plans, and ETC, what happens to them? What happens to uh, Ruto's government that was being seen <laughs> to be close to Biden? And that's what I'll try to answer in this short video. Uh, and if you are interested in that, I urge you to stay tuned. If you are watching for the first time, take a moment, subscribe to this channel so that you don't miss subsequent videos. Otherwise, let us answer this question. Uh, you see, contrary to popular opinion, uh, and why I'm saying popular opinion is because I've gone online and I've seen how Kenyans are reacting to this. People have really politicized this, uh, especially those who feel like uh, uh, Ruto deserves some sort of punishment or a form of loss to compensate for what it is that they believe Ruto has done against them. They are saying that uh, this is uh, symbolic to Ruto being a one-term president because his friend Biden was uh, has also been defeated as a one term. So there are people who are like, the relationship between Kenya and the U.S. is gone. Trump will deal with Ruto in ways that Ruto will not believe. Now, I don't want us to get that trivial. That is trivial. That is simplistic way of looking at politics. The relationship between the U.S. and Kenya is based on what we call foreign policy. Kenya has their foreign policy and U.S. has a foreign policy. That is what dictates the relationship, nothing else. It doesn't matter who is in office. There is a U.S. foreign policy and there is a Kenya foreign policy. That foreign policy, ladies and gentlemen, doesn't change fundamentally. It may have some changes because, remember, Republicans and um, Democrats have a different way of engaging people, especially in Africa. For the Democrats, if they engage you, then they would insist that you also adopt their culture. And they, that is the only difference with the Republican. But otherwise, in terms of what level of engagement are, it's almost the same. So nothing dramatically is going to change yeah, in the relationship between Kenya and uh, and. Uh, and the uh, United States. But this is how Democrats approach um, their relationship with other countries, especially countries in Africa. And I'm very specific. In countries in Africa, countries that maybe are expecting aid or expecting some gift from the U.S., what they do, they insist that you must also adopt their ideologies. Take an example. Obama gets into office in 2008. His first act is to issue an executive order that makes homosexuality a human right. And so if America was to help you in any way, then especially if it is aid, msada, then you have to also admit, accept that homosexuality is a human right. And so that is how re Democrats approach their um, foreign policy. They also want you to absorb their culture or their view of things. Republicans on the other side don't do that. Them, they are real capitalists. And by real capitalists, I mean they look at, we are giving you this, what do we get? So them, the, it, is, it is literally bilateral. <laughs> So when, when, when Trump or a Republican is in office and they are supposed to help you, it is a matter of we are helping you with this, we need you to do this for us in return. They don't care about your culture. For them, the relationship is quid pro quo. What do we get? For, for Democrats, they may not even uh, consider what they are getting in return. All they are saying is that if we are helping you, please uh, ensure that 
democratic views or the liberal views that we expose also become part of your life. That is why people say, and it is a popular argument here, that Republican governments have been very good to Africa. Now let's go to Ruto. So what is Ruto's uh, position here? President Ruto is a Republican, openly a Republican. Remember, he was the leader of United Republicans Party, URP. And because of those conservative values, Ruto was so much against provisions in the Constitution of Kenya 2010 that were even trying to legalize abortion. He opposed that particular constitution because there was a section that was saying abortion is illegal except when a doctor says it is not. So you look at that, he's been um, a Republican. He has made that uh, proclamation openly even in his interviews with the, the liberal media. Because remember, whenever you go to these states, they send the liberal media to ask you whether you support homosexuals or not. And he has been candid. He's been like, no, no, no. We, that, those are not things that we support in the country. Even when the Supreme Court uh, held a view that a certain homosexual body was supposed to be registered as an NGO, the president made it very clear that those don't happen in this country. This is a country that is God-fearing, and we will not allow certain things. So William Ruto is conservative to the core. I can even take you back to when Obama was coming into the country. I don't know if you could remember that. There was a time that people were even saying Ruto was not going to be allowed to see Obama or to greet Obama. He was the vice president then. He was not going to be allowed to meet Obama. Why? Because of his strong position against homosexuality, something that Obama was espousing by that time and promoting globally. So, William Ruto, when it comes to what does he identify as? He has always been a conservative. And he doesn't mince his word. These claims that William Ruto was willing to make concessions on this and that, those are just normal politics. Pedestrian to say. But now that he was um, a Republican at heart, but you have a Democrat in power, International diplomacy dictates that you work with whoever is in power. You might not like Museveni, but he is the president of Uganda. If you want to deal with Uganda, you work with Museveni. If you don't want to work with Museveni, also forget dealing with Uganda. You might have issues with Democrats. You might be openly against their policies, but they are the ones that are in power. So if there are things that Kenya needs to do with the U.S., Kenya has to work with Biden. Kenya has to work with an ambassador that Biden has sent here. Otherwise, the relationship between Kenya and the United States will go south because that means you don't recognize their president. And it is very, very dangerous for us internationally to have issues with superpowers. We are also a powerful nation, but not at that level. When uh, uh, US is concerned, we are supposed to be, in most cases, diplomatically loyal. But that does not mean that we don't have a position. And that's why I like the president, uh, president of Kenya. He has always made his position known on specific issues. I don't support this, I don't support this, I don't support this, I don't support this. And the Americans have learned to accept how Kenya handle things. Okay? The Americans have learned to accept how Kenya handle things. And now, now that we have a Republican uh, in power, we can go back to how were we relating with Trump during his first term. It's not as if Trump is becoming the president for the first time. Trump has been president before, for four years. And Kenya was relating with Trump. Remember, he was president when Ruto was vice president, was deputy president. So it's not as if we've not engaged these people before or that we have not engaged Trump before. Actually, uh, Duale was the other day on, 
on Citizen, and he was asked by Jeff Koinange on uh, his position on the American politics, and he was categorical that uh, we had been in URP, we are uh, Republicans, but uh, we wish whoever will win well. That is what he said. And Wale and Ruto was, were in the same party. So now that we have a Republican in power, I believe that as opposed to what people think, we are actually going to have a better relationship. That is why I was saying Kenya now has a real friend. You see, with, with, with Trump, what you see is what you get. If, if he likes Kenya, he will say, I like Kenya, I want to do this and this and this with Kenya. He doesn't pretend. He will be concerned with what matters, what also is of the interest of Americans. So don't, don't look at it from the angle of if, if Ruto was relating with Biden, now Trump will come and punish him. No, Trump has no particular issues with Ruto. Ruto has been deputy president when Trump was, uh, uh, was actually president. And so uh, moving forward, what I know, is that Kenya is going to have even a better relationship with with uh, with President Trump. Even if you looked at the language the president used to congratulate Trump, it was nearly saying, he was just almost about to say that I was one of your favorite fans. Because as a Republican, we are we are conservatives here. Most most Kenyans are conservatives. So finding us to ally ourselves with ridiculous policies uh, that the Democrats stand for is very difficult. But in such circumstances, you find that you cannot go to a country and decide for them how to rule or how to do things. So we, were, we found ourselves working with them because that is how it's supposed to be. But now we have a friend, somebody we share values, we share beliefs, and somebody we can depend on that if they told us they will do A, it will be done. I hope this video was useful, ladies and gentlemen. Um, Kenya is not going to lose anything. If anything, we are going to be better. If you found this video useful, drop a like. Let me know your views in the comment section. And also consider subscribing if you have not subscribed. Otherwise, let us meet in the next video.